I did notice that a lot of resellers use the term investment. And you know, hey, buy this bag, it's an investment piece. Hey, buy that bag, it's an investment piece. Investment, investment, investment. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today, it's chit chat with tea time. And we are gonna be talking about why I am mortified to buy from the pre-loved market. Before we get into things, you know what I'm gonna say, right? If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on post notifications so you never ever miss a video. I post up every Wednesday and Saturday and we focus on fashion and luxury. Without further ado, let's dive into all my 1,000 reasons and tangents why I will never shop pre-loved. What do you call a new pre-loved item? Because it's not really pre-loved because nobody ever used it. <sighs> okay, anyways. <laughs> Going on a little bit of a tangent. Over the last few weeks, a lovely subscriber had actually left a comment on my Louis Vuitton video, the unboxing of the Pochette Matisse East West West East Coast bag. <laughs> and she said that people had been basically buying bags but returning fakes into store. And that obviously, you know, when I read that comment, I started doing some research and I was like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> is this even a thing? Like, is it even possible to do? This is something that has been circulated basically online, like with Hermes. Um, apparently essays were prosecuted because they would replace the real bags with fakes and then obviously sell the real bags as real and customers who were buying from Hermes were buying fakes but this is something that I read online which it's scary because if you think about it you know someone like myself I've always been very anti buying pre-loved and like from resellers from anywhere I've never ever bought from any resellers I've if I've ever bought anything, it's beneath, like way beneath a thousand pounds value on Vestia Collective. And even then when I get it, I'm so skeptical. Like if I had no idea about handbags or anything like that, then I would never purchase anything basically because I just, yeah, I'm, I'm one of those people that will buy something, get it authenticated. The authentication, uh, the authenticate, the authenticator will say it's real and I'll still doubt that it's real and think that the authenticator got it wrong. <laughs> I'm one of those people, so that's why I could never personally buy from a reseller or shop pre-loved because I am way, like, way, 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 way too skeptical when it comes to <laughs> to any of that. And another thing that 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 like I just wanted to touch on. Fakes are getting so unbelievably good. Again, I've read a couple of people saying how you couldn't even tell the difference. Like they had a fake amongst their real stuff and they couldn't even tell the difference between the real and the fake because they're becoming so much better. And not only are they now being made in China and usually China, Turkey, places like that, they, they make the replicas, but they're not as good. They have factories in Italy. In Italy, obviously they get better materials. It's a trade and people can learn because it's not done by machinery it's kind of like coming here on youtube you know it's not a god-given talent that only i can do anyone can do it if they put their mind to it and they can learn to to to, to speak to the camera for instance you know i didn't know how to speak to the camera <laughs> Now I don't feel like I'm speaking to a camera, I feel like I'm speaking to you guys. But in the beginning, it was a little bit awkward because I'm like, uh, 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 and I didn't know how to be myself. I remember my husband saying like, why don't you get a picture of someone and stick it on the side of the camera? So when you're looking at the camera, you see the face and it feels like you're talking to someone. So it's just like anything, you know, it's not something that's gonna be limited to only the people that work for that specific brand. So fakes are just getting better and better. There's this whole thing of, you know, people buying the real thing then return in the fake. I think it is a little bit more difficult when it comes to things like if if the bag has a chip and stuff like that, but it's just it's just getting crazy and crazy. So it's a big turn off for me. When I bought the Fendi baguette, because I bought it on Vestia Collective, um, when I had bought it, I was I, I, I thought it was fake. Because I was like, the price is way too good to be like to be real. It is not possible. And after extensive, when I mean extensive research. <laughs> I spent hours trying to figure out whether this bag was real or fake, even though Vestia Collective has said and verified that it was real. I even found out the year the bag was made. <laughs> that's how much research, and I found actual images of the bag. So that's how much research I'd done for me to get that peace of mind and think, okay, I've just spent a thousand pounds on a bag, 
and it is legitly real, but it was a case of one of those things where maybe it's too good to be real. And that's another thing you have to take into consideration. You know, sometimes you look at something and you'll get an, an amazing price and you're like, wow, <laughs> yes, I've got the deal of a lifetime. You need to ask yourself why that thing is so cheap. You have to be super, super careful. I'm so paranoid that I remember when I got my green Birkin, it was in Mexico, okay? And I was paranoid that it was fake, that maybe during transit, from the New Mexico City to the other store which I was in that maybe somebody took my real bag and switched it with a fake one. That is how paranoid I am. <laughs> so I was second guessing my own bag that I actually bought from the Hermes store because yeah, I'm just, I'm that paranoid. So yeah, for me shopping pre-loved is a huge no, 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 no. My my whole, like the way that I think and the way that I feel, I personally don't believe in buying replicas. You know, if you buy something, then it should be directly from the brand. Fine, you can go to a reseller that you trust if you want to. I don't mind dupes, because I feel like dupes are kind of, they get inspiration from the product, okay? There might be similarities, but you can see it's not a complete copy of another bag. And that's the difference between a replica and a dupe. Um, you know, with the Attico jeans, which I really, really wanted a pair of, they have a unique look. Look. <laughs> they have a unique look. Um, the Fashion Nova pair, which I bought, are the dupes to that because they're very similar, but they're not quite the same. You can see that they're not the same. They're not made in the same way that the Attico trousers are made, which is why they're called a dupe. But a replica is when a person <laughs> outright copies a bag or an item and then claims it to be the real thing. I think I completely digressed. Another reason why I don't shop pre-loved is because I did notice that a lot of resellers use the term investment. And you know, hey, buy this bag, it's an investment piece. Hey, buy that bag, it's an investment piece. Investment, investment, investment. It's very hard for something to be an investment when you're already paying a really high premium on something. If it's below or just about the same price as you would pay in store, maybe just a couple of hundred pounds more, that's an investment. But not when you're paying way over, like double, triple the price of a particular bag. It's, it's, it's not an investment anymore because if you buy that bag to use, that bag isn't gonna be worth what you bought it for, first of all. Second of all, even if you didn't use the bag, chances of selling it at that price are gonna be very, very low. For me, <laughs> it's the boutique or nothing. Another issue which, you know, a lot of people don't think about, right, is what happens when there is an issue with the bag and you don't discover that issue till a few months later. What do you do? Do you take it back to Chanel? Do you take it back to Hermes? Do you take it where, what, what can you do? With Birkins and Kelly's and stuff like that, I know you can take them to get sparred, but that's a service you pay for anyway. But let's say you bought a brand new bag and after a couple of months, you start noticing something that isn't right. What do you do? You can't take it back to store because you didn't buy it from a store, you bought it from the reseller. And that's another thing you have to think about because you don't get that assurance afterwards that if something's wrong with a product, you can return it to store and they will sort it out for you. I don't know what it's like with like proper reseller companies, but like let's say if you found a bag on eBay or you found a bag on Bestia Collective or anything like that, there's no way that you can return this item after a few months of use if you start to notice that there is a problem with the bag. It takes a different kind of courage to, to, to buy bags off of, for me, Vestia Collective is counted, but like eBay and, and, and websites like that, even the actual reseller websites, they get so many bags in, I'm sure they must get a few counterfeit bags here and there that they miss. Not everything will always be 100%, and I think that's probably what scares me most, even when buying from like a professional reseller, because we're all human, there's bound to be mistakes. No matter how much or how reputable a company is, there is bound to be a mistake somewhere along the line. And I'm just one of those people who thinks in her head that I will attract those mistakes. So I'd rather not take the chance. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, my, my main reasons as to why I'm like so anti shopping pre-loved. I'm personally way too skeptical and I would never ever spend over a thousand pounds on any bag. If it starts going over the thousand pound mark, that's when I start to look like 
directly from the stores. So yeah, Miss um, <coughs> Paranoia over here. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys feel about replicas? I know some people are like, oh, like they don't, <laughs> they don't mind. But like I said, it's a whole big industry and it's not just, I think the problem with us is, or a lot of people, they just look at something there and then they don't look deeper and to, 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 to the effects that these counterfeit items can have, not on you per se, but like on other people, the child labor that goes into making these products. Um, these are all things that a lot of people don't think about because you know, it's not right in front of them. So it's definitely something worth thinking about and doing some research on. I would urge anyone who's thinking about maybe potentially buying a replica bag to look at brands like Coach, Marc Jacobs, Michael Kors, you know, they're all brands, Kate Spade, another great one. <laughs> they're all bags that are at the lower price range, but still really, really, really good quality when it comes to the way the bags are made. So yes, friends, that is my reasons, with obviously my added tangents on the side, as to why I am terrified of shopping pre-loved. There's just too many fakes for my liking, and too good of the fakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd rather not risk it. And when it comes to bags and, and, and stores, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I haven't heard a lot of people speaking about this, but I have seen a few stories. And like I said, a lovely subscriber of mine is the reason why I actually started doing some research and started reading up. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what, am I, what is going on? <laughs> so if it wasn't for her, then I probably wouldn't even have made this video. So thank you for that, by the way, you know who you are. And yeah, have a beautiful rest of the week and I shall catch you in Saturday's video. Take care, bye.